Hello and welcome back everybody, I hope you like that kind of spooky intro. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make your very own one of these spooky creeper face base entrances. And uh, you saw earlier that I did it with a tip of the hat. Uh, I'm going to show you how to actually do it with any sound that you like thanks to the brand new Skulk Sensors. Uh, I do want to start out by apologizing just because every YouTuber that I watch apologizes when they have a cold. Uh, I was trying to get this recorded all yesterday and typical fashion I had recording issues it's almost like 50% of the time now so I'm very very under the weather but I'll do my best to get through this. Uh, so for anybody who would just like a tutorial please skip to the timestamp that you see below this is going to be a bit of an explainy one because I want people to be able to make their own versions of it and not just have to copy this exactly as it is so I'm gonna be talking through all the different circuits and all the different components that are involved in it in different ways that you Yourself to suit your needs a little bit better so uh, if you do want just a tutorial just how to build this block by block then skip to the timestamp that you see below and we'll build building a version of this that you see here um, but for the meantime if you're interested in the redstone do stick around because I'm talking to you about how all of it works now as I mentioned this door uses the brand new skulk sensor and uh, you saw that I said tip your hat there. What you can actually do is apply any piece of armor whatsoever and even to an armor stand. So you can reuse these uh, circuits if you like for different purposes. So if you wanted to say set up a trap that if somebody takes some armor off an armor stand and the place floods or something like that whatever you wanted to you apply these circuits for that there and basically when you apply the of armor to the armor stand or to yourself it gives off a particular signal strength you can actually see that right here I have this set up uh, I actually meant to scroll this book back here to page one just so you can see the uh, circuits that go up so if I put a block that's not wool on top here I've I haven't got this guy in water so that we can actually hear when he triggers so he's triggered there and it's gone all the way up and what we're listening out for is this sound right here and basically what's going to happen is at uh, this circuit when um, you give off a signal that's not strong enough goes up to say here and it doesn't reach where it needs to um, and then if you give it a signal that's too strong say like a chest opening for example I think it's quite high up on the list let's check there I think a chest opening has the same sound level as an explosion, which I think is crazy. Um, but as you can see here, this circuit is flickering and lighting up, but the torch is not lighting up there. And if I do this, see again, it's gone all the way up to the top, and it's too strong because what happens is is that this turns on, yes, but this one also turns on. Or sorry, this one turns on to turn the torch off. And this turns the repeater on also so that the block stays powered and the torch doesn't get to turn on. But if we give it the perfect signal strength, just wait for a second. Uh, skulk sensors have a tiny little cooldown. I don't know how long it is, but you can't just make like two sounds in a row. You have to kind of wait for it to, to stop being lit up and stop being alerted. And if we put on this, you'll hear a ding. Because the signal strength was absolutely perfect. Come up here that it's turned this torch off but it has not come up here to turn this off and I've actually put down a lectern here so that you can see that in action so if you see in the top left of my screen here now I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor but you'll see that it has one there now then it goes to and on the next signal strength we're gonna see that it's gonna turn off the torch and make the ding because this is powered so this gets switched off and this is not powered so this stays off and it's a great way just to make sure that the signal strength is not too strong and that's basically how the skulk sensor works but what I wanted to point out to you is that if you go onto the Minecraft wiki there is a whole list of every sound that you can make in the game and just say you want it to be a different sound you just move this circuit down to wherever it's supposed to be so you say you want to set it up here and you say you want it to be a sound of six. I'm actually going to flick over and check the wiki right now. Volume of six is a block change. When a book is placed on a lectern, a minecart moving, a splash. So when an entity splashes in water, uh, when a wolf shakes off after getting wet. That's a very interesting one. I haven't read that one before. And then when a note block plays, um, it will. Oopsie, Daisy. 
that'll be that perfect sound there. This book is still written. Yeah. So you just set it to six, and then you move your redstone torch to here, and you put your repeater here, and it'll do the exact same. Now, I've kind of squished this down a little bit, and in this build, my first build ever, I believe, I'm going to be using cake. So what you can do with comparators here, uh, firstly, what you can do a cake is you can get a signal strength of 14 from this and and for each slice that you take off it reduces it by two and as we saw over here you actually want the signal to be nine uh, so what we can do is we can subtract eight from that and what we get is one so I've just filled this hopper up so that it's got a value of nine so if I were to remove this see that it's got a value of nine here and if I put in the, uh, the comparator going into the side of it, and then I set this comparator to subtract mode. You see, it's still at 9 with this, but if I put it in here on subtract, you see it goes down to 1, and that just makes our circuit a bit more compact here, because in the original version, before I did this, you can see the signal comes down here, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for the overflow of the signal. Turn that off, so it's just a bit bulkier, but like I said, we can reduce this down, to this right here and using an, uh, a target block as well you can make this a little bit shorter because you can place the target block right here and you can see right here that this is a much 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 smaller circuit and it will do the exact same thing so basically if you get a signal of nine through here it gets eight subtracted from it so only one can come out here and that turns it off and it turns on here and if it's stronger than nine it turns on this and it keeps it powered so that it can't uh, ding. Uh, next up we are going to talk about the arms, uh, the doors, basically the pistons that control um, the movement and everything. And uh, I've done the power things, as in the skulk and the redstone and the, the power that goes to these things in red and then the actual moving pieces in white. Uh, this is just for it to stand out. If you take a look at the original design here, I have redstone placed on the cobblestone so that you don't see the white concrete. It's just on the inside, and that's just for aesthetic purposes. I should just bust on in here. See that it's all cobblestone in here. You don't need to worry about uh, how it looks. Just put the redstone on any block you like. I've just done that for clarity. And basically, the really important thing to do to make sure that the second arm to be extended which is this one right here is extended first always even though it's not actually extended first it's to make sure that the sequence of the arm movements happens at the right time so if we turn this on now this is powered first and it's also unpowered first which is the most important thing because if you try to retract an extended piston it won't work so you need to make sure that this is retracted before this one is retracted which is why you tell it to extend first and if you see now if I retract that it all goes in nice and tidy like that so to see that in practice now we can pop on over here to this uh, finished one I've done this two different ways so that you can see different ways to do it um, I think that the final version over here not only is it the most compact but it's also kind of the uh, easiest to do um, so I'll just show you these now. So if I place the armor on here, seeing everything so far that we've seen in action, the signal strength of 9 went to here, gets subtracted, turned to 8. It'll turn that off, allowing this to turn on, which will power the face, the, the mouth part to fall down, and then that will power come up here and unpower this first, and then unpower these afterwards. So on slick see that working and like I said you can use any blocks you like for these obviously so long as they're sticky and if you want uh, these to close up in a particular order just mess around with the repeater delays here so if you see I'll watch it on the close again let's close a little slower Seems to be a bigger gap between that. But anyway, so uh, we'll come over here. This is the final design right here, and I'm going to show you how to build this now. So this is the official beginning of the tutorial if you have skipped ahead now.
Uh, so we're going to start out with the entrance basically and we're going to imagine that this dirt path right here, I'm just kind of throwing this in anywhere. Uh, this is our entrance on the walk up to it and this is going to be the first two blocks of the creeper mouth and I'm just going to place these here so that you can visualize that. So these are these two blocks right here, so these white blocks. So you can see that represented in the dirt path and you walk up. So wherever you want that placed, this is where you'll start. So yeah, here we are on the dirt path and this is the starter point for where you put your skulk sensor in. And you're gonna come down four blocks from here and we're gonna need some red wool for that. Two, three, and then this is number four and this is where you're gonna put your skulk sensor and before we cover him up we're gonna want to put some water on there that he's waterlogged and don't hear him make sound Cool, that's the first part done. Then we're gonna put in the comparator that comes off this block to get the signal strength. That is from here. This is the block next to Skulk, not the block that is beneath. And then I'm gonna put this in here, this in here, and this is where our redstone line is going off and the power is going to start. Um, but first, I wanna do some cake sub subtraction. So grab yourself some cake. And if you put a comparator going into the side here, put your cake in, and then set this to subtract, then eat one, two, three slices of cake. So we're going to continue the circuit here and come out, and there's just going to be two bits of redstone dust here. And we have one torch, which is the torch we want to have turned off, and then one repeater coming off the part that's too strong. So, like I said, if you get a signal strength that you want, this will work perfectly, and if it's too strong... So, place down two blocks here, you can actually get rid of this one if you want, and put in a uh, target block to make, to, or make this uh, redstone turn in here, and then place a torch on top, and we're actually almost finished. We're just going to build a comparator clock now, or a comparator delay. So we're going to start just by putting a block on top here, coming out one, two, three, and then one, two, three. I'm going to put just on top of these two, and then have your comparators going. I think you can go either way, it doesn't really matter, so you can go this way and this way, or this way and this way. And we're going to put two blocks up here, and then dust on top of these. So now we have a bit of a clock going on, and that'll just delay the signal from burning out little quicker and also this is your on switch for the exit so on top of here I'm gonna put these and then doesn't really matter any color let's mess up the design a little bit here and put these on and you'll see I can now exit that'll slowly that'll keep the door open for as long as that is lit up there um, and from the side here, we're going to extend this signal just a little bit. Have a repeater come out here. I'm going to put that into a block. And then make a torch tower. So that is all of the power stuff that we have to do. I'm just going to show you that in action now. If I could spell armor. It's on here. On here see that torch flickers on or off should I say and after a couple of seconds it turns back on again so we are good to go so we're gonna start doing the mechanics of it now which is the arms and the parts I'm not sure that now in just a second what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in some of this area cobblestone just so it's easy to understand where everything So here we are again, I've just filled in this little kind of U-shape of uh, cobblestone just so that you can see the structure a little bit better. So here we are, we're staring at the front of the creeper face and uh, we're going to install the arms that come along here and the arms that uh, along here, uh, walk along these and then 
since I'll up and the store open so free. So we'll just start out nice and easy and go with the sticky pistons here and here. I'm gonna come down. So I'm representing all of the kind of mechanical, the moving stuff with um, wiped uh, white concrete, but again like use any block that you like at all. Um, and you do want to put in a, a repeater in here just because of the comparator burnout. This will actually, this one will come down before this one just because it'll go 5, 4, 3, count down slowly. But if you put a repeater here, the signal will be consistent and they'll drop down at the same time. And we can watch all this in action. There you go. And after seconds. So we can close this off now. This part is complete. Now I'm just going to place in our white blocks that we're aiming to move here just to make it super clear what we're, the goal is here. And then you want to come out. Uh, I'll use cobblestone. Temporary blocks. And you want to put some sticky pistons here and here. Uh, yeah, and then on this side. Get rid of those once you're, once you're done. piston then you have one here and show you that in there make sure that yours matches up to this and then we're gonna add in the wiring now. So we're going to pop over to our torch right here and just put a, a string of blocks on top of that. Extend it now. And we want to repeat that over on this side. Now we're going to add in a delay in here in just a second. I'm just doing this for now. And now we want to extend out and extend these pistons as well, and we'll put some dust on there as well. Now, as I mentioned over here, there is a very, very crucial part that we want, and I've actually done it this way intentionally so that you can see it kind of uh, the wrong way. And that is, if these pistons retract before these ones, what will happen is nothing will happen. You can't move a, a, an extended piston, so we need to add in a delay here. And we'll do it that way, here, do it that way, when we stand here, beautiful. We'll come out and watch that close, right, and that is it, and then you just decorate with your creeper face or whatever it is that you want on top, I think the creeper face works really well, you could do it with uh, green concrete and stuff and make it look like a proper creeper. I chose the stone aesthetic to make it look like a lost spooky temple or something like that. Um, and like I said, let me just demonstrate the uh, the lectern with the different sounds. Book. Yes, excellent. And give me one of those. So, if I put this book in here now, and I set the delay to be one less than the sound that I want to come through. So just say, I want... The Elytra Glide, which is number four, I would set this to three, right? So we've set this to three now. I'm going to break this other stuff here. And if we get rid of this, it's picked it up, but it's too strong, right? So it didn't work. It didn't open the door. But we're going to put on an Elytra now. Ta-da! And that happened by detecting the Elytra Wing Glide instead. And you can do that, all different sounds. Basically, just go on the wiki, figure out the sound that you want, set this book to be one less than, because it's going to subtract. So you only want one coming out of here, and then you can do it that way as well. Uh, you can move this, put it anywhere you like. So you can make this absolutely any sound that you like there, just go on the Minecraft wiki to the Skulk Sensor page and in the table find the volume that it's set at. So uh, this was Elytra Glide, it was number 4, so I set the book to number 3. And if you go to 
Uh, geez, there's eat food. We can actually test that one out now, and that's eight. Let's change that to seven. And then we'll come up here, and I'll just stand on the block and get some food. Ourselves an apple. Can I eat in creative? Ta-da! So that's how you can set it to absolutely any sound at all. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be the sound that we set it to. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you build this in your well do let me know if you do and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much and bye bye.